Hey everyone, and welcome back to Robbie's Backstage Bands. Today, I'm joined by the lovely Adam Lyons. Would you like to give yourself a proper introduction and say what you're doing at the moment? Yeah, hi everyone. My name's Adam Lyons, and I am currently in Mrs. Doubtfire, the musical, at the Shaftesbury Theatre, which is just phenomenal. Like, even saying that out loud, I'm in the production, I'm like, ah, like, yeah, literally. <laughs> it, it's what a production it is as well. Um, I managed to catch it last time I was in London. I was so pleased. It was such a good show. Um, I didn't know what to expect from it either. And to see it, it was, it's become one of my favourite musicals since, which I'm really living it at the minute. But no, um, my first question for you today is more about um, how you got to this point. Um, and it's a very vague question. Answer it however you want to. Uh, it is, sure. what is the journey of how you got to where you are today? Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's been more of a journey, <laughs> put it that way. But um, I mean, I've, I started off when I was 18 and I'm now 31. And this is my West End debut. So I had my West End mm-hmm. debut at 30, yeah, when it started. Um, But the journey to this, yeah, I started off being more of a backing dancer. And I did like a lot of commercial things and I've done tours with artists. And I thought like, that was the direction I was going in. I always knew that I loved musicals and I loved singing and I wanted to be a part of a production at some point. But for the first few years, my career was just crazy and so like versatile. Yeah. Um, and But I guess that's where I, re- I really got to work on my craft. Do you know what I mean? And to really get that discipline and yeah. I work my butt off. Um, And then, yeah, there was a point where I did Priscilla the musical, and that was my first musical. But I did a couple of tours before before the West End show, Doubtfire. Um, And obviously, again, got my experience doing that. And I just always used to miss the auditions for West End. Or like if I did do an audition, I would get like quite far. Sometimes I'd get to the final, but then just never get it. Yeah. But then it was just meant to be. There was something special about this audition. And I was like, okay, I'm almost 10 and 30. I really want to do my West End debut by now like this is my time yeah. and thank god it was this show because it's made it so much more special yeah it is a special show isn't it I was I really do think it's, it's special so um in terms of training did you do where did you train what did you do there yeah I went to London Studio Centre um I graduated in 2013 which is crazy now to think of that um but yeah, before that, I used to go to obviously dance schools in Liverpool and just work my butt off every night after school, going to different classes and stuff like that. Yeah. Then moved to London, went to London's Studio Centre. And yeah, I feel like I just got thrown straight into the industry in my third year at college. Um, I started doing the Voice of Ireland as a back and dancer. So I left college early. And so I feel like I just throw myself into the deep end. And that's where I really, truly learned my craft, I feel. Just getting thrown in and going into work, which is amazing. Well, that does sound amazing. Yeah, it's so good that you've had that experience in two different sides. It doesn't often yeah. happen that people have been off and done all sorts of things and then come to the West End. You know, it, it usually comes from the West End. So that's it's different and it's it's interesting to see that. Um. In yeah. terms of your doubt for your audition, you said it was really special anyway. Mm. Um, but how was it? What was that like for you? Do you know what? I walked in. I had a pretty chaotic morning before the audition and my car was getting clamped. <laughs> I left the house, my car was getting clamped and I was like, no, not today. I've got a very special audition. Um, so anyway, I walked in quite flustered and was like, oh God, what a morning. Like I just had to pay like £700 to release my car and all this stuff, I don't know, from a parking bag. Um, And then I walked in and something just took over me. Like, I'm not really the biggest fan of auditions and it it can be quite, like, I feel the pressure and all that. I don't feel like I do my best ability. I don't feel like I show my best ability in an audition and I feel like that's just being human. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. A pressure. But something was different about this. I walked in and it was like, it sounds really like weird, but like, I was like, I feel like I was home and I was like, I think this is mine. I just had this, premonition <laughs> of like I'm gonna book this job when I walked in and I just did the choreography and I felt like it really suited me and I really enjoyed it Um, the actual audition process was yeah really enjoyable and I forgot that I was actually auditioning at some point and was like I'm just having a really good time and it feels yeah. right and 
I'm a real strong believer of that, like, timing is everything and everything works out the way it's supposed to in life for you at that specific time. And, yeah, I just remember buzzing from the auditions. Um, I auditioned the first round because they come over from America several yeah. times, I believe, before the cast was fully announced. Um, so I was in the very first set and I had two weeks of intense auditions pretty much every day. Um, dancing, singing, and I cover Stuart in the show as well, so I was doing the material for that. Um, yeah, it was pretty intense, but yeah, I think two weeks of auditions, and then I found out a couple of weeks later, maybe like two weeks later after that, and I just was over the moon. I could not believe it, but at the same time, could believe it, because I was like, I just knew. Very, mm-hmm. very strange experience, surreal. But, Amazing. Yeah. I'm so but happy that you did. Yeah. yeah. It sounds like it's been a godsend as well, which is, it looks like such a fun show to be a part of. Um, yeah. Really and obviously we did stint in Manchester before, which was great. So we've become a yeah. family there. Um, and yeah, just everyone's so lovely. We all get on so well. It's a genuine joy when we step on stage. There's been a lot of comments of how like, it looks like a solid team and how much fun we're having on stage. And that really comes through. And it's yeah. so true. It's genuine. We all just have the time of our lives every show. It's amazing. Yeah. You can see that. You absolutely can. Um, mm. Now, the rehearsals, I imagine, will have been quite intense, um, especially with the show coming over from America. They didn't do much change from that, did they? Um, the changes from the show in Broadway? Yeah. Yeah, there was actually quite a lot of change regarding like the dialogue, like the script mm. and stuff, just to adapt it to the British audience, I guess. Um, but yeah, we did workshop some things, some numbers. Um, yeah, but not too much change choreographically and stuff. Mm. Yeah, but it was it was pretty intense. We were sweating. I remember it was forty degrees heat. It was that summer. This was for Manchester. And it was that summer where it was just 40 degrees every day we were in the studio, dripping, but I love it. I live for that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so after we'd set up in Manchester, that was pretty much then set up for the West End. So rehearsals this time round was kind of like just um, recapping and going over what we'd yeah. done and making it that extra bit more magical, I guess. Mm. Just putting a bit more on it. Yeah, it was a little bit of a little bit of magic dust and then it was, and then it was ready. Um <laughs> Now, before we get into actually chatting about the West End run, you guys did Comic Relief, which was pretty cool. Gosh, that was a highlight. That was a highlight of my career. I used to play as a child, Comic Relief. Like, I used to go in my garden and I'd pretend I was on these TV shows. And for some reason, it's, it was always Comic Relief and Children in Need, what I'd have, because I used to be inspired watching performances on there. Yeah. Um, from musicals and my favourite pop stars and stuff like that. So... To then be like, oh my gosh, we're performing on Comic Relief. It was a childhood dream, like a lifelong dream come true. Yeah. Um, we had the best time. And it was electric, there was electricity in the audience. Yeah. Like it sounded like that, yeah. You can hear on the video, like the audience was like, like screaming for it, which was it just egged us on even more. It was the best feeling ever. And I'm so happy with how it came out. I think it really like shows through the screen, like the energy. For that number, mm-hmm. Make Me a Woman, which is one of the best numbers in the show. It like. is one of the best numbers in the show. It's one of my absolute favourites. Um, yeah. Seeing that, it's it's fantastic. And I'm, I'm assuming it was a great selling point for the show as well, because people obviously know the movie. They've seen it a million times. And they might be thinking, yeah. oh, what am I going to expect from seeing it live on stage? And that just encapsulated everything about it that anyone could possibly love. Yeah, and I think people were waiting, anticipating the reveal of Mrs. Doubtfire. Like, what is she going to look like? And, like, we have the most amazing team who just, oh, like, the, justified to Robin Williams. Who, what I feel like we really paid justice to Robin. Absolutely. Incredible. I would agree there, yeah, definitely. Now, <clears throat> it's a it's a full show of amazing uh one-liners, amazing numbers, amazing choreography, everything. But is there a moment in the show that's just your favourite moment all round? Oh, my favourite moment. Do you know what? I really enjoy the number, easy peasy. Do you know where we're all like dancing, tap, we're tapping around as dancing chefs. And I really enjoy that. Like every day I'm like, this is amazing. Like, I feel it so much. Um, But also 
I love my bit of La Rosa, do you know, like the reveal at the end yeah. in the restaurant. I love that. Like it's me and Lisa and Tom, Lisa Madison, Tom Scanlon. We're like the flamenco trio. And every day we just go on with fire. Like you just have to give everything. And yeah, that's another highlight in the show for me personally. Um, mm. But it's also, it's at the end, it's like the scenes between the family, between yeah. Mrs. Delphire, Miranda, the daughter, Lydia, like, all of their moments when the music comes in and the overscore hits you, like for me, when you're watching the show, that just it just gets you mm-hmm. unexpectedly. And I think that's a moment. You're yeah. like, oh, you're having so much fun. It's so entertaining. But then it also just like captures you. And you're like, oh, you see a lot of people wiping their eyes. And the that audience, was me. Yeah. Is, yeah. For me backstage, I'm going to go on, actually just like... <laughs> That the whole, the whole, to be honest, the whole probably the last half an hour, it was just like, but um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, I'm glad you I said that. Can... Yeah, sorry. The the La Rosa scene is my favorite in the movie. So like, Sissy in that on stage was just like, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, so cool. No, it is, and Easy Peasy as a number is up there for me. I would say it's it's just genius. It is. Yeah, and it's utter chaos. It's chaos on stage in the best way possible. Like, there's everything going on, and you have to, like, toss butters into a pan, like, one at a time. Like, there's just so many moments which could go wrong, but it's just magic. I love it. Mm. Absolutely love it. Have you ever missed the butter? Has it ever... Ooh, there was... (laughs) There was a few shows where, like, a few of us were missing the butter, but apparently it was because of the weight of the butters. Like, they would, like, pop out of the pan. So, like... (laughs) <laughs> Gabriel <laughs> Delphi and Daniel would catch the butter but it would pop out and we were all like oh. and then they got us these new butters which are more like brick like so when they're in the pan they stay in the pan stay in the pan oh because I was never good at ball games at school and throwing and all that <laughs> every time but now we've nailed it we've got oh, it yeah I was tonight I will <laughs> touch wood quick um, yeah. do you have a favourite memory that's just stuck with you for the whole process obviously you're a big family so mm. favorite memory it's well it's got to be open and night it was the 12th of may um in the west end and i just it was a celebration it was like everything we've worked for up to that point and like the process from not knowing at the end of manchester when we were going to be in the west end and stuff mm-hmm. so it was a whole build up of like eight months i think it was or nine months of just waiting like for this moment and I remember going in that day and one of my best friends had surprised me to come see the show and I thought no one was coming and it was just a very surreal day and I remember being so present on stage and just thought I'm going to soak this up and just enjoy every second of the performance Um, and I'd never I never felt nervous I just felt this positive joy and this energy of like let's just smash it together and I feel like that was the whole team we all felt the same and I'll never forget that night for the rest of my life just the stand innovation West End debut in an amazing production with talent all over the stage it was just yeah a dream absolutely now obviously you mentioned you cover Stuart Mm -hmm. that's exciting what's that been like covering a role that's really cool like I've covered roles before on tour and stuff like that but this feels special because like I haven't been on yet I've done my rehearsals I've done my dress run and stuff so it's just like when I go on I go on but it's just again a role what feels right like to cover um obviously there's a gym scene and I love Barry's boot camp and I feel like the gym scene is set up in that style (laughs) um the gym is called sweat in the show and I just feel like yeah, again, it was just meant to be. It was like, yeah, I can cover Stuart. Like, it's going to be a really fun role to do. There's some iconic moments. And, and he sings a really fun song called Big Fat No with Mrs. Doubtfire, um, which gets a lot of laughs from the audience. And you can have a nice little play with that and um, with the chemistry between Stuart and Mrs. Doubtfire. So, yeah, I'm really looking forward to when I go on. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been a cool process. Yeah, I'm always watching. I'm always taking my notes. Yeah. And Samuel 
who plays Stuart is amazing, and Tom Scanlon covers Stuart as well. So there's three of us Stuarts in the building, just yeah, joyfully give them a show when we need to go on. <laughs> well, hopefully, hopefully soon. Um, I'll hopefully try and catch you. If you're on, give me a shout. I will too, um, I will. I would who knows when it'll be? Stuart. Yeah, who knows? But it's yeah. it's a show I will be seeing again and again. It was it was amazing. Um, obviously you cover Stuart, but if you could play any other role or track in the show, which would it be? Ooh. I mean, I'd love to sit there as Miranda and sing Let Go <laughs> <laughs> in another world. But no, if I could cover another role, hmm. Do you know what? I love the relationship between Marcus and Cameron, who play Andre and Frank. I would love to sing Make Me a Woman mm-hmm. as Andre. That would be really fun. Yes. Yeah. I love what Marcus does in the show. He's so fun and full out and the vocals. I feel like that would be really fun to do. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I just I'm so so content. Like my dream was always to be a part of an ensemble. I've never been one to be like, my dream role is this, is this. It was always to be a part of a team and just go out there. And obviously I love the combination of dance and full out and giving that energy with the singing. So I feel like what I do in the show really does fulfill me every day mm-hmm. as an ensemble member. And I think that's really important that like we all have our different dreams and our goals and aspirations. And for me, it was to be a part of this magic ensemble team and just giving it beans every night. Absolutely. Just... Always giving it beans. 100% beans. That's what we need. But, yeah. <laughs> but I love, yeah, I love Andre. I love that character. I love what Marcus has done with it. And that would be really fun to take on that. Yeah, that would be. Well, in another, hey, we never know. We never know. It might happen. It might happen. I just all of a sudden we need a new Andre. Uh, well, well, but you know, watch this space, watch this space. Hopefully, it stays here for a couple of years. Hey, yeah. Who knows? It very well could do. I think it's it's worthy of staying a couple of years at least. Um, and then a tour, and then yeah, yeah. it's worthy. It's so worthy. It's 100% does justice to the movie, in my opinion. Um, mm-hmm. I was about to say it makes it better, but then I thought everyone's going to come for me on YouTube and I'm going to get destroyed. So I thought I might keep that one. Um, It's such a a compliment because a lot of people, um, a lot of people's feedback in the audience is that like, like it's justice to the film, but it's also, it can be seen. It's got songs in it. It's it's right on my street. It's personal preference, isn't it? And it's, it's amazing because we were worried about what people might think about that and be like, oh, People are going to be like, it's not as good as the film, but we don't get that at all. We get, if no. not, it's better. It's a celebration of the film. Yeah. It's a celebration of Robin Williams, the story. We've just modernised a few things, but in the right way. I feel like the team has just been so clever mm. about it. And yeah, made it really relatable. Yeah. It is. It is my yeah. reason. Yeah, absolutely. Um, have you had any onstage mishaps that you just... Sometimes you'll just be laid in bed and you think, oh, I remember when I did that and just laugh about that for a while. But you know what? Yeah, in the La Rosa scene, my pants, my trousers would like rip at the bottom and my fly would be like open. And that would happen a lot in the previews. I was like, <laughs> um, I'd be like, beat out to one of my dresses. It's amazing. I'd be like, beat out, like, quick, quick, quick. And they would be like stitching me up like just before. And sometimes there was like these clips just like holding me up and I'd be there like, just, yeah, sure. just all like, Am I revealed to the audience or not? Um, I feel like that's, yeah, that's probably the major mishap, but it was fun. You've got to laugh. Yeah, if you don't laugh, you'll cry. Oh, yeah. But that's happening. Um, that's it. Yeah, I feel, feel like touch wood, everything's gone pretty smoothly. Yeah. There'd be sometimes, I do a kip up in the show, which is like you're on your back on the floor and then you like flip mm. yourself up. It make me a woman, and sometimes, like, I've gone to fall back out of it if the floor's like a little bit slippy or something. Little minor things like that, which no one would ever know. But yeah. sometimes before the show, you're like, oh, I hope that I hope that goes right tonight. Yeah. You know what I mean? It will stay in your mind as a moment where you've got to really like focus. Yeah, just... absolutely. <laughs> you can always, you've always got that thing going, please don't do that. Please don't do that. Yeah. 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 Was... And the Rose to see is very exposing. So I, I do always go on thinking, oh, yeah. I hope I'm tight. I hope I'm secure tonight. Mm. 
<laughs> Absolutely. Now I have one question, which is your chance to sell the show. Um, which not that it needs selling because it's absolutely amazing, and you can get that from me. Um, <laughs> why should people come and see the show? Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm an advocate for the show. Like we're so proud of it because it's one of them shows which I feel like the West End really needed at the minute, and it needs it. It's just an easy watch. You go, you have fun, you feel. You watch some amazing choreography on stage, amazing songs. It's a talented cast. Seeing Gabriel Vick and Reese Owen and all the covers who ever go on are absolutely incredible. And Mrs. Doubtfire, and it's just unbelievable to see all the changes and what that man does on stage is just like so overwhelmingly, breathtakingly amazing. Like I'm in awe every night. Yeah. From start to finish, it doesn't stop. And I think just coming to see the performance alone is amazing. And it's just, yeah, one of the most fun, loving shows, full of heart. The word of the job, which we all say, is joy. I feel like it's advertised. It says it's a complete joy. Like, it is a joy from start to finish in every way. And I feel like I'm literally getting emotional just being like, it's a joy. Uh, but it really is a joy. Yeah, it, you can tell it's a joy. It's a joy to uh, watch. Yeah, absolutely. But um, aside from that, I just want to thank you for joining me today. It's been an absolute pleasure, an absolute joy, I should probably it's say. It's been a joy. <laughs> yeah, it's been. Um, if anyone wants to go get tickets to Mrs. Doubtfire, we'll leave a little link in the description so you can go and grab some, go and support them. And if Adam's ever on a Stuart, scream at the top of your lungs. Um, and when you find out, go and book your tickets. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure you can get the rush tickets and just go down. Um, that, that'll be me. I'll be me there. Um, you know what? Even before then, just come. I'll be giving you a hundred percent. I'll be a dancing. I'll be strutting around that stage. I'm here, there, and everywhere. Come and see us. Absolutely do. <laughs> um, but aside from that, thank you all for watching this episode. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe because then I can bring you more things like this, which is super fun. Uh, I always enjoy getting to chat to everyone. Um. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Thanks so much for joining me, Adam. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs>